In this episode, we are going to be talking all about the data list tag, which is a cool little tag in HTML5. And if you don't know what it is or what it does, it helps us add auto suggest features or give suggestions to a user when they're typing into an input so that you can guide them on some of the best things to do. So we often want to auto suggest things and instead of going and making a big complex backend or wiring up some other stuff, this is a very simple way I find to get stuff done. So let's just jump into this episode and show you how it's done. What did the colon say to the semicolon? Stop winking at me. That's a terrible joke, code pen. You should feel bad about that. Is that the equivalent of like programmer dad jokes? Anyway, so the data list tag is basically like a hybrid between a select tag and a normal input. It doesn't enforce you having to select an option, but it gives suggestions that you you know, you might want to guide the user to. So uh, as I said before, I might use this for like some tags or suggesting a color for somebody. So let's just jump straight in. It will make a lot of sense. If you've ever used a select tag, it's very similar. And I'll just take my face off the screen and you could just focus on the code now. So we'll start off with a label with a for an input will say, programming languages. And we'll say what your fave pro, if I could spell we'll close off that label. And that is going to be for our text input. So we'll give this a type of text and an ID will say is equal to, well, let's just copy and paste this actually, just because I'll probably mistype it if I try to do it again. And we are going to give this, actually, I'll wait a second before I do, I'll close this off for a second. And I'll, I'll start using the data list first. And just to make this look a little bit prettier, I have some CSS off screen here. It's a tiny bit. Don't ask me why this will make it any better, but I just think it's a little bit nicer to see it in this way. So you can get the source code after and have a look at it. What we can do very like a select is we can have a data list here. And I'm going to give this an ID of Oh, I'm really typing bad today. Uh, languages. And in, let's close this off before I forget. And inside here, we're going to have our options. So let's give this some suggestions. So what kind of suggestions would we have? We'll give the obvious starting one, which is a value of Java script. And we'll close off that option. And I'm going to copy and paste this a couple times. And we'll say Python or Java and the number one programming language, HTML. So now we'll see how do we connect this list to this input basically, because as you can see here, not much is happening if I say J, I'd like to see JavaScript. So what I have to do here is give a property saying list equals languages. So it's copying this ID here. Oh, here. And now we should have disconnected. So let's take a quick look. And if I say, look at that, as soon as I clicked, I got all the options there and then some other things from when I was messing, obviously, but Java script. Boom. Now, the other really nice thing is because you might say, why wouldn't I just have a select? So again, if you don't want to enforce something, but you can also add notes. 
So say here, you know right well that somebody's picking HTML, that they're trolling. So you can actually add a note saying, stop being a troll. And then when somebody starts ty typing HTML, it will actually say, stop being a troll, which is a nice little note. You could use this for the other things to like maybe say what the tag is for or anything else. But I think that's pretty useful. Let's show you a second sample just so you can see how flexible this is because yeah, it's nice with just a normal text input, but I just want to show you how good this thing is and how you combine it to more things. So what we will do here just to save time on me typing it out because my fingers just aren't working today. I'm going to make something here saying pick color and we'll say pick a color and we'll give this a type of color. So we have a color picker and we will call this pick color again. And then we're going to give this a different one. We're going to say this is the colors and we'll give this the ID of colors. Now let's change these into values here now. So I'm going to use some of my own branding colors, which is some pinks, blues and dark grays to use instead of uh, blacks really. And then we can have to be, to be, to be. And I don't need this last one really here. So let's get rid of this HTML one. And now, as you can see, we have a type of color. We've connected this list of colors, which is this data list here. And if I select this, you'll see I have these previews right here. Now, if I delete this, what do I get? You'll see I just get the standard color picker straight away. So I automatically get this color palette by using this data list, which I think is pretty interesting if you are going to, you know, offer some suggestions to people for colors to pick. Now, of course, there's only some certain niche cases this is useful for, but I always like to show people what tools they have. So when a use case comes up, they'll go and grab the right tool for it. Now, when would I use this? If you've any less than say even 50 or 60, 70, up to say 100 items, I would kind of leave it at that because it is being added onto the DOM. It's probably a bit overkill at that stage to just be typing out and trying to manage all your tags in the DOM. Although, you know, it's still going to be cheaper than doing an API request, I guess, than just loading up some text. So. Play around with this. There is other ways to use it. You can use this with a date tag as well, which I've used before and I find that really useful for suggested dates, maybe if it's for holidays and things. And yeah, let me know what you think. And until next time, happy coding.